May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Friends, please be seated. Welcome to worship this Sunday, the 5th of October. December, my goodness gracious, where has the year gone? And I was about to say it is the new year in our Christian calendar. My goodness gracious. And welcome to our second week in Advent. We continue to meet as a gathered and a connected community. And if you are joining us from home, please prepare your elements of bread and wine or water for our communion service this morning. And we acknowledge the traditional custodians. We gather on Wadarung land and we acknowledge Indigenous leaders past, present and emerging. We are a church who strive for reconciliation for all people. And we remember this land was never ceded to its colonisers. We participate in hope for all inhabitants of this country and in our world. Our call to worship. We gather longing for gentleness among all. Peace is the home we seek. We gather longing for healing where there has been harm. Peace is the home we seek. We gather longing for generosity to inform all actions. Peace is the home we seek. We gather longing for peace in all parts of life. God is the home we seek. Come, let us worship God in the spirit of peace. And as part of our celebrations, we will be lighting our second candle this morning. The candle of peace. Wonderful. Now, I'm going to need some special volunteers. I wonder if... I had someone who was 10. Kalani, would you love to come and join us? And I also believe someone is celebrating a birthday today. I wonder where a birthday celebrant might be. 
somewhere there, maybe Adelate. I can't see her. I'm not sure where she might be. Is she hiding around there? Where is she? Is she? Oh, there you are. Would you like to come and join us as well? Thank you so much. Hello, Kalani. And we'll wait for Adelaide. Happy birthday, Adelaide. <laughs> yes, yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Friends, we'll join in our response and then we will light the candles. Our Advent candle lighting for the promise of peace. For the robe of righteousness we are certain does not fit. We light this candle. For the messengers and prophets encouraging us to prepare. We light this candle. For our tired feet exhausted by pacing up and down, back and forth. We light this candle. For the landscape that has already changed. We light this candle. For the refining and purifying of what could be, we light this candle. For the acceptance, we now feel that things are not as they should be, we light this candle. Now, Kelani, would you like to? We're going to light out two purple candles. So, would you like to light that or would you like to help? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to light it from the Christ candle. Can you help me with that? Okay, that's it, so just tip it up. There we go, get it nice and close, not too close, of course. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Atalate, would you like to light the peace candle? Thank you, Atalate, and thank you, Kalani. Our second candle for peace joins the first candle of hope. Let us stand and sing, light one candle for hope. He brings hope to every heart he Loving God, you meet us where we are. In hope, we prepare ourselves for your coming in the now and the yet to come. Fill us this morning with your spirit and steady our resolve to be your agents of peace in the world. In your gift of grace, we praise you for the peace you have already shown us in companionship, forgiveness, and love. In your Son, Jesus Christ, amen.
we gather our prayers of confession now and lift them before God. When greed overtakes compassion, when fear overtakes reason, may we turn our hearts to you, O God. When despair overtakes hope, when hatred overtakes understanding, may we turn our hearts to you, O God. When apathy overtakes concern, when deception overtakes truth, may we turn our hearts to you, O God. Friends, the affirmation of a loving, generous, and assured companion God. God's grace is in that still, small voice that calls to our hearts at all times and in all places. We will open our hearts and listen for this voice of love so that we might discover when it is time to turn. Amen. Please stand as you are able, and we will sing hymn from Tears number 274, The People That In Darkness Walked. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Rob. I've got many things to bring before you this morning. I guess that's reflective of the time of year. And indeed, many of the people that I greeted this morning uh, have said how busy it it has been for them this week and looks like being increasingly busy in the lead up to Christmas. Friends, this morning I'd like us to remember Rob Saunders. Rob passed away on the 27th of November and uh, Rob wanted a no fuss private funeral and that was held on Friday. 
Our prayers are with the family and friends. Uh, we continue our Christmas giving through our Christmas giving tree and also the Christmas bowl. The envelopes for the Christmas bowl are available in the foyer. There is a Tarze service here this evening at 7 p.m. Uh, the service will be face to face and won't be available on Zoom. The new issue of Beacon is available today. So if you haven't already done so, please collect your copy from the tables in the entrance foyer. Uh, and if you can take those for a friend or somebody who lives close by, that would be much appreciated. The orientation sessions for our welcoming program will be held this coming week on Monday night at 7.30 p.m., Wednesday at 2 p.m., or Thursday at 9.30 a.m. So the idea is, if you can, to attend one of those. There are refreshments provided at each of the sessions. I was chastised last week for not saying that the refreshments were available. All are welcome, and there's a list in the peer wing for you to sign up for your preferred time slot. Um, or you can let Laletti or I know your preferred time. A reminder that Yana's will be held at the home of Lorraine Smith tomorrow, Monday at 12.30 p.m. All are welcome. Uh, those who ordered uh, spring rolls from Nur can collect them from her after the service and Nur will be in the foyer. Thanks to those who provided some much needed contributions uh, during this past week for our food bank, but it's still quite low on frozen meals. So that if you're able to make a donation, please remember that all containers need to be labeled clearly with your name as the food preparer, your food number and the list of all the ingredients and that must include the spices and flavorings. And if you can't get here to place your donations in the freezers, please contact Ross Jones. Next Sunday, December the 12th, we will have our outdoor service concluding with a picnic lunch. At this stage, the long range forecast looks good in the low 20s, but Ballarat, who can tell? Um, it will be held in the same location as last year in the uh, space bounded by Zoo Nursery Drives and Lake Wendery Parade, where the pavilion is. Um, we hope you can join us. It's not going to be possible to live stream the service and it won't be recorded. And there won't be a service here next Sunday. So we encourage everybody to come and enjoy the day. Now, last Sunday, Leslie uh, announced uh, that Zoe Creelman would be speaking about her upcoming work in Arnhem Land with the Church Mission Society at the one to one uh, sorry at the one to yes at the one to one church in Gilly Street next Wednesday evening. Uh, but please note the time is 7:30 and not 8 as previously announced. Uh, Leslie would like to remind you all that Christmas cakes need to be picked up before next Sunday. So if you can contact Leslie by calling her. Uh, before calling into her place. Uniting Threads Quilting Group is having a trading table in the foyer immediately following the service. There will be Christmas items as well as other gift ideas. Now you might have noticed that our nativity scenes over to my left that uh, were put out last week for the Star and Angel breakfast. Well, Greta tells me that in the, in the mall downtown, there is a display of some 600 nativity scenes, which is quite impressive uh, in its own right and uh, well worth a look. So uh, we encourage people to, if they have the opportunity, to go and see that and perhaps take friends. And finally, I'd just like to say, Adelaide looks pretty good for somebody who told me this morning she'd only turned 21. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Your word, O oh Lord, is a lamp to our feet. The reading is from Malachi 3, 1 to 4. 
See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in, in, for, in former years. Right. The choir is going to lead uh, for the Benedictus. If you know the words, you are welcome to join him. This next reading is from Philippians 1, 1, 3 to 11. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a hero born of he Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a pro a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless, yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing that Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. 
I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Luke 3, 1 to 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Eturia, and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Anus and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the, the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the word of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked may, shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Lord, may your word live in us. The next hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, Tis 315. Mm. We will sing, but we will steal our hearts with energy. Loving God, I pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are pleasing to you. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Stirring words of promise and hope. Welcome, Christians. Welcome to the new year in Advent, God's coming, as we look forward from the now, the not yet. Are we preparing for Christ? How are we preparing for Christ? How are we going to meet this coming? And what is it that we each as ministers of Christ's church are proclaiming? Our conversion in Christ and the baptism in which we are brought to new life through forgiveness and the release of sin is the way in which our reading from Malachi shows us that we have already been prepared for God's reign in Christ. We are made shiny and new, precisely so we can speak with confidence in God's gifts for the world. Just as the refiner's fire and the fuller's soap have shaped each of us, or the clay, which we offer ourselves to be reshaped. We too, we too are drawn into the prophecy of waiting and preparing for the peace which will remove all obstacles. How good is that? Pretty good, right? In Luke, we join in the mystery in which John the baptizer implores those on the banks of the Jordan to prepare in this epic time of anticipation of the child who is to come. The first ripple of a stone in the water from which all peace and justice will ripple out. Now, this is not just any stone, but the stone. 
the child from God, given so freely that all pain will be reconciled and all efforts of peace will be justified. Let me say that again. All pain will be reconciled and all efforts for peace will be justified. Prepare, for you are not merely spectators, but enjoined wholly in a cosmic drama of life and death. The tale of good becoming victorious over oppression. The commandments on our wall bear witness to this active participation, and we are left in no doubt as to whom the kingdom of God is given. Not to dealers in big words. Not to kings in great courts. But the meek. The sinners. The peacemakers. And those who for righteousness sake give their all. Paul's entreaty to the Philippians bears witness to the hope which emanates from God's grace as the sole agent of purity and blamelessness. In this all-nurturing embrace, we are held in God's heart so that we may strive to live lives worthy of the peacemakers, the righteous in praise of God's enduring compassion. How hard is it to let go and to put the future in God's hands? How hard is it to let go? In this week where we have reached a zenith in vaccinations throughout our state and our nation, we are again met with a caution that there is more to come in an aggressive Omicron variant of this pandemic. When we may have thought we were out of the woods, so to speak, how does this translate to our understanding of living in the now of assurance and the not yet of hopeful yet anxious anticipation. How might a child respond to this? As adults, we have so much control over our own lives and those we care for. Yet the child who has only their self and perhaps a few possessions is fully fully dependent, trusting in the one who cares for them. I wonder that children have much to teach us who know so much and yet at times remember so little. Theirs is an enduring trust, but also a voice of reason which discounts Pragmatism and stoicism favouring simplicity and honesty. I see this as a parent in the simple desires and prayers of my own kids. And in spite of the grumpy dad within me that wants them to brush their teeth at all costs and do what they are told or face the fire of brimstone of a grumpy dad, they know that they are loved. Even when I forget to tell them. We are loved. Just as we are. As we welcome the new year in our church, it is timely that we reflect on our community's preparations for Christ's coming and the good work that we are already doing. Our active participation in ministry, 
our welcoming, and our hope. Our hope which gives those in and outside the gathered church community new opportunity for refuge and strengthening in Christ. In this, friends, we are messengers for change. Beacons to the living word. Let us discount our years, our maturity, the edge which life has given us, and put on the robes of a prophet. Embracing our role as messengers in delivering God's word and light to people in need. If we only say, yes, yes, God will mould us, refine us and shape us to strengthen and point us in this task. And perhaps in the simplicity of of a childlike prayer, we can reaffirm our brokenness in the language of our heart to be restored in hope and to receive God's grace in peace, afresh, anew, once again, today, now. Be strengthened, friends as active participants in Christ's glory. Be prophets of peace. Put on your robes in the world, and we will be given succor to be bold, to be brave, and ring forth the trumpets of God's love in our world. Sisters and brothers, we have our marching orders. Hmm? Stand with me now, as you are able, and sing for the glory we have been given in a faithful God and the glory which is to come. Amen.
Well, if you're able to sit down after that, please be seated. I feel stirred and I feel energised. Friends, your, your giving for the mission and ministry of the church will now be received. Let us pray. Loving God, take these humble gifts. Give us your strength. Give us your assurance. And give us succor as we seek to make the world a better place. To make our community a better place. And to make our friendships, relationships better. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay, we'll take this on. Please be seated. We share together in prayer. Compassionate God, today we pray for all those for whom hope is simply a word and not a life-giving experience. We pray for those in our own community who see no path out of their depression, their circumstances or their life patterns. We pray for all those who do not hope, who cannot hope, who live in denial, or who see things only negatively. We pray for those in communities around the world where hopes are dashed again and again, where positive change does not happen, and when things do change, they seem only to change for the worst. We pray, Lord, that you will raise us 
and others up as communities of hope. We do not want to be communities of false optimism or easy answers. We want to be those with the courage to face the truth of a situation in all its pain and complexity. And at the very same time, we pray to be communities that trust and respond faithfully to the words that you spoke. The tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. We bring these and all our unsaid prayers in the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, we come now to our time of communion, our time of being in, with and for Christ. Come all who are weary, come all who seek peace in Christ, come if you love the Lord and would like to love Christ a little more. In this way, we know the living reign of peace in our world and affirm God's love for the world in Jesus' name. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we read the institution of the Lord's Supper. God of peace, we remember the story shared with us that Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, responded with the gracious welcome of peace to friends and sinners alike. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed it broke it and gave it to them. Eat this, this is my body, he said. And know that whenever you do this, remember me. After supper, Jesus took a cup of wine. He blessed it and shared it amongst his friends, Drink this, this is my blood, he said, and know that your sins are forgiven. We also remember the scripture. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of humans, but of God. We who are removed from that night by time and space, remember this living word, we remember the gift of peace given to us and the command to live our lives in the spirit of peace. When we take this simple bread and this simple cup before us, we are sharing God's delight for all people. We remember Jesus here, present with us today, offering us his abundant life. The God of peace who comes to you and all the world be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to God. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The hope of the now and the not yet. The hope of peace and of joy to come. We join in creation heralding the new and affirming what has already been made for us, the children of God. And so we lift up our hearts and we lift up our voices of thanksgiving and adoration to you, God of all. And In our wandering ways, we have turned away from you, but you, with steadfast love, have never failed us in hope and the peace of your companionship. You gave us your Son in mercy. Through the fullness of humanity as an infant, he was raised to maturity in order to fulfill your promises on the cross. Death could not hold him, and now he reigns at your right hand, our promise of new life in you and forevermore. Blessed are you, Creator God, you have not left us, but have sown your seeds of reconciliation into the very fabric of life itself. From this humble place you feed us with the gift of bread to nourish and sustain us. Send your Holy Spirit on winds of peace to be with all who have heard and all who would hear anew your love for humanity. We praise you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Those of us, those of you who are who are joining us from home, uh, this time, you may lift up your bread. The body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. And for those who are joining us at home, lift up your elements.
receive this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving. And for those at home, please wait while we distribute the elements to those who are gathered today here in the church hall and we will eat and drink together. We have a gluten-free option as well. I might just in, uh, entreat you not to eat the uh, wafer in the plastic cup if you need a gluten-free option and uh, just raise your hand and our servers will bring them to you.
the body of Christ is broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. Friends, we believe that God created us to be people of peace, strengthened in hope as a beacon to your word which guides us always. And we say with confidence the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And our wonderful servers are going to collect the uh, plastic packages during our next hymn. Thank you very much. Sorry, Mary. Friends, stand as you are able and sing with us. People look east. I forgot to tell Lyle that the congregation has me is uh, invited to sing from the third verse. Gives you two verses to hear how it goes, and then join us.
through sun and shadow, guide our hearts in the way of love. Through rush and response, guide our minds in the way of wisdom. Through deluge and dust, guide our spirits in the way of joy. Through calm and chaos, guide our feet in the way of peace. Amen. Friends, blessings as we go out into the world, sealed in our resolve that we will be participants in God's agency of love, comfort and reconciliation to us and to all who seek him. Amen. Our dismissal song, Prepare the Way. Please join us. Prepare the way of the Lord and all